Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. My name is Vinny and I'm joined with today's guest, Stephen. He's selling his display advertising business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you so much, Vinny. It's really good to have you here. I'm really interested to hear about your business and giving you the chance to share about the inner workings of it and everything. And just before we get stuck into the finer details, let me just give our listeners a brief summary of the business on discussion today. So today's listing is a display advertising business in the lifestyle and parenting niches. And it was created in November, 2013. The average monthly revenue for the business is $13,070. And it makes an average of $8,612 $8,612 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are a domain and all of the site's contents and files, an email list with around 9,000 subscribers, SOPs, social media accounts, advertiser relationships, and contractor relationships. Head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 50496 to learn more about the business. If you want to start your due diligence, just remember to unlock the listing first. Stephen, that's the general overview about the business, but let's find out more about you. Can you tell me a bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Is this your first foray or, you know, have you got a bit of experience in the about here? I've been uh, dabbling for about a decade, if that's the way you want to look at it. Like so many other people on Empire Flippers, I am a classic entrepreneur. This is probably my 10th or 12th rodeo. I don't really keep a tab on it, but I'm lucky enough to have been in businesses across a wide spectrum of industries. And so this one was just, you know, another one of those diamonds in the rough that I found along the way. And it's been a really fun ride going thus far. And so I'm excited to see not only where this goes, but what happens in the future. For sure. I mean, 10 years under your belt, you're basically a veteran in the industry at this point, because obviously online businesses as an industry as a whole is still in its infancy. So I would say, yeah, you're pretty knowledgeable about it, probably much more so than I am. Let me ask you this, David. Maybe not, Vinny. I mean, because I say I'm a classic entrepreneur, the lucky, I've been in, you know, traditional consulting. I've built a SaaS service from scratch. Don't ever do that. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just playing. That's actually one of the hottest businesses out there. I have been in the trenches and I've been in the leadership roles. This is the property that we're talking about today is another one of those things where, you know, you as an entrepreneur, you kind of keep your fingers in lots of pots and lots of projects. And this is just one of those projects that turned into a real diamond in the rough that, you know, we shined it up and it's really just a fantastic little project. And so, like I said, you know, I don't think I'm a master. I'm still learning every day. Absolutely. I think that's the way to go, especially it's one of those things where as you progress in your entrepreneurial journey, it kind of feels like the more you know, like the more you realize you don't know. And this is a lifelong learning process for sure, which is great to hear. So, I mean, it definitely sounds like, as you've said, you've dabbled in lots of different projects. You've thrown a lot of stuff and tried to see what sticks. I want to find out how did you come up with the idea with this business in particular? Like, did you start this or like, how did you come up with the idea with this one? I acquired this business. So Mm -hmm. the short answer is it's great to be someone in the digital nomad universe or the digital marketing universe who's a little bit older. That means that I'm also at a different stage in life. I've got kids. And, you know, this service that we're talking about here is actually one that my family used when we were transitioning from one country to another. And it turns out that as we use that service, we really liked it. You know, as you said, it's in the event management sort of parenting, you know, niche. And the long and short story of it is, is that I just happened to be connected with the former owner through our kids, right? And it was one of those conversations you kind of realize, hey, wait, I didn't realize that you ran that service, blah, 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 but we actually used it, you know? And it was a conversation that I started with the former owner that lasted over several months. And as that conversation progressed, I realized that, you know, she had been running it for several years and was ready to 
take a different turn and, you know, go on with a different path in her life. And I said, look, this is a place where I have experience. I'm really interested in the opportunity. And so that's how I came to acquire this company. And as I said, just a little while ago, I looked at it as a real diamond in the rough. This was a project that had developed a incredibly solid brand in Southeast Asia and in Thailand where it's located. The brand itself was solid, but just the reputation of the information that we provide, of the services that we provide to our clients, you know, and sort of just the community that we've built, that it was a no brainer for me to kind of pursue this. And what I was able to do over the, you know, course of the couple of years that I've owned it now was turn it from sort of that classic passion project into a pretty, you know, well-oiled machine where we've put you know, lots of nice systems in place. We've put a great sales team in place. We've put a great fulfillment team in place and whatnot. And so kind of take it from that passion project to a really well-functioning machine that is a business. And now it's a formidable force in that space in Thailand. That makes sense. So obviously a lot to unpack there, but I think it's interesting you were saying the business opportunity came quite serendipitously really you know it was just one of those things where the two paths crossed between the former owner and yourself obviously like you said you didn't realize that a friend was actually running the service you ended up using it and like you say the opportunity just sort of came at the right time really and after you did all your due diligence and everything you spotted that it was a really good opportunity given the business profile at the time and yeah it makes sense why you took it on so let me just ask you how does the business actually make money the expatriate community in Thailand. So if anybody who's, you know, if you're familiar with Thailand, it's a country with 80 million people in it. And, you know, there are any number of social platforms or Facebook pages or services out there for parents or whatnot. But guess what? They're really the vast majority of them are focused for Thai parents and they are focused on in the Thai language, which makes it an incredible barrier to entry for anyone who's not of that community. And so the woman who started this saw that opportunity. And because we publish in English and because we are extraordinarily well connected with a wide network of international schools. So that's, you know, our number one client out there. You know, there's more than 130 international schools just in Bangkok alone. That gives us some really nice power in terms of being able to speak to that community, speak to the parents. You know, obviously, that's our target market. But then it also takes us out into, if you look at, think of concentric circles, right? You know, you've got your parenting community that's really interested in schools and what schools are doing and those kinds of things. Our client base then moves out to what do clients or what do parents do with their kids? And so there's an activity universe out there for, you know, what are you going to do with your kids on the weekend? What are you going to do with them after school? Are there camps? Are there seasonal activities? These kinds of things. And then you move it out one circle further and it's what are you going to do with the family around the country and beyond? And so that's where you can get into restaurants, hotels, you know, anything related to tourism, whatnot. And so what the business does is the business sells advertising of those services to our community base. And those community are expatriates. They could be, most of them live in Bangkok, but there's a fairly sizable portion of tourists that, you know, find our material organically because we've been around for so long as they're either coming through for a long vacation or they're coming in for, you know, they're stopping off for a month as they go to the islands or, you know, they stick around and check out the mainland. And we point them to the places where they want to go for family-friendly activities and services. Gotcha. Thanks for that detailed breakdown. That, that makes sense. It basically sounds like you've found like a product market fit. And like you say, it basically makes money by selling advertising to the specific communities. Okay. For people who are interested about getting started with online businesses, why would you say that display advertising is a great model to perhaps start off with? You know, advertising is a tried and true proven, you know, this is one of the first models that was out there in online business and it still works. You know, at the end of the day, the value add that we put out there is the information that we have, right? And so our job is to make sure that we have the best information about schools, the best information about restaurants, hotels, activities, and we package it in a way that's very specific to a community of people who have children, right? And in order to do that, it costs money. In order to do that, you know, like I said, it was a passion project for a long time. And that, you know, meant that it was kind of limited to what we talked about and how far you went and what rabbit holes you went down. But because we've increased the business, because we have reached out to more and more sponsors or more and more advertisers, this allows us to have the ability to discover new activities, to, you know, create events that are possible that weren't possible before. So customize events. And it just gives us the ability to make that information more rich because we're supported by this advertising network. And I don't know, in this particular case, it's not driven. There's so many plays out there right now. Quite frankly, I'm not sure if they're on Empire Flippers or in other places that are traffic driven, right? So 
they really depend on making sure that you just have a really, really substantial amount of traffic coming to your website because they're going to be click through ads or those kinds of things. Whereas our advertisements are really built around relationships with these clients that are in Thailand. And so you need to obviously have a response for whatever advertising campaign you're putting through. And each one of these advertisers are, are very interested in the number of leads that are coming through for them and those kinds of things. The relationships are really what is the most important piece. And connecting with the brand and being associated with the brand that we have is also a significant premium for these advertisers. So that's a really long answer to say, if you're getting into the business, advertising is still a great way to do it, but you just have to make sure that you're adding value and that you are putting value into the universe that speaks to a very particular community, which is what we have here. And then, you know, if you're able to build relationships like this company has since 2013, basically, that really carries a lot of weight going forward. I'm loving the detailed answers. I think that's providing a lot of value to our listeners, especially if they're new to online businesses and just trying to understand how display advertising works, because I think it can be one of those things where you try so hard and you create a bunch of content and it can be quite discouraging when you're not getting you know, the ROI that you're expecting. So it's really good to know, hearing from someone on the other side of the journey, how it works and how to really leverage this monetization method. So yeah, great stuff. But, you know, Stephen, our listeners will be wondering, though, given the success and the growth of the business, why are you selling it right now instead of staying with it or growing it? It's a really simple answer. You're talking to me in Mexico right now. Mm -hmm. And I acquired the business when my family was living in Thailand. We lived there for four years. Absolutely loved our time there and would be happy to stay longer. But for personal reasons, we chose to move to a different part of the world. Managing and owning a company on the other side of the planet, it actually really forced me to systematize the business in a way that maybe I wouldn't have done as rapidly as I did. But, you know, basically I worked myself out of a job, right? This is an you know, absolutely fantastic opportunity for somebody sitting in Thailand or Southeast Asia who wants to be local, who wants to be a part of this community, who wants to have these connections and that kind of stuff. That's no longer possible for me. And so I'm selling the business simply because this is a fantastic opportunity for does want that opportunity. And the, the team is already in place to work with. And it's a great moment for me to move on and pass the baton to the next person. That absolutely makes sense. You're no longer there in Thailand. And so kind of a natural curtain call for your time with the business for the time being. Honestly, Vinny, it's a bittersweet one. I love this. Like I said, you know, it was important to me as we entered Thailand because we used the service or, you know, I mean, it as just sort of a, a new family that was coming into Thailand. I now have built a team that I care about. You know, these are fantastic people to work with. I believe in the service. This is something that is going to be evergreen forever, right? This is parenting. This is children. It's a little bittersweet, but this is a really, like I said, it's a perfect time to pass the baton to somebody else because the business is thriving. It has nothing but upside, in my opinion, about, you know, where it can go in terms of growth. And yeah, so somebody who's looking for that opportunity, who's ready for it, this is a great one. Um, we will unpack all of that in terms of the opportunity and the workload just in a short while. But I just want to ask you about your experience while you were running this business. What did you find as you were trying to scale it that just really worked for you? Well, I hate to say it this way, but the real answer is, is to just treat it like a business. I think what happens in so many cases is that many people I've met in the, again, the digital marketing universe, they're usually looking for hacks. They're usually looking for ways to, again, drive traffic or, you know, somehow, you know, automate things so that they no longer have to do the work. And at the end of the day, a business like this, it's really about putting in the work. It's about making the phone calls. It's about making, you know, coming up with ideas and creating new products and new information products, new event opportunities so that advertisers have a place to put their advertising dollars, right? And so that's where I saw the major opportunity when initially looked at purchasing it was that there was just so much opportunity in terms of here's this site that's got this reputation, this brand that has this reputation, and the monetization opportunities are many fold. And so where can it scale to? Right now, we have just only tapped the surface in terms of Bangkok. We are extremely well established, as I said, in the international school system, and we are fairly well established. I don't know. We're very well established in the what we'd call family and child friendly activity universe. But, you know, the opportunities for to what you would consider tourism outlets, again, hotels, restaurants and other touristic activities, vacation packages, those kinds of things that not completely untapped, but definitely a huge growth area. And then when you just think of everywhere outside of Bangkok. I mean, Chiang Mai, another huge center. You've got Phuket, you've got Koh Samui, you know, all of these places where there is a large expatriate or tourist population. These are 
essentially untapped at this stage. That's great to hear. When you first started running the business, was there any software or any tools that really helped you to hit the ground running? No, I mean, this is a fairly standard WordPress site that is, you know, delivering information in a, in a blog format. So there's nothing special. There's no amazing automations or anything like that that's happening on the back end with this. Sure. Makes sense. Obviously, you just described what worked for you, you know, about just treating it like a business and the mindset that you want to have there. Was there anything that you tried that didn't give you the ROI that you hoped it would? You know, we have tried a number of things. For example, when for anyone interested, if they visit the listing and then, you know, obviously they go through the procedure in order to actually view the property and whatnot, they will see, you know, the commercial opportunity for this particular site is fairly intense. You know, right now it's display advertising and that's been our bread and butter for a long time. But if you think about the commercial opportunity in terms of a marketplace, so you kind of move from the activity and the selling hours kind of mindset to, hey, there's a ton of products and services that are out there that are both parent interesting and also child interesting. So we've banged on that door a couple of times. And, you know, we've had some successes. We've had some things that have failed. We've had information products that we've put together that have flopped. And then we've found great success with other ones. And so we've gone through trial and error. And, you know, we think we've hit on the right balance in terms of what kind of information products we put together and what the community is interested in and in response to. And just, again, were I sitting in Thailand right now, this would not be on the marketplace. This would be, you know, something that I would be absolutely growing, you know, day out by myself Mm -hmm. or not by myself, but with the team. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I just want to then switch over to the marketing side of things. Cause I mean, I noticed from your business that you have quite a sizable social media following. Can you describe where the majority of the traffic comes from for the business? You know, the traffic that comes to our site is geographically mostly based in Thailand. I mean, I think if I remember correctly, it's, you know, up to 75, 80 percent. And then, you know, sort of, again, moves out into Southeast Asia and then up into China, Japan. And, you know, those would be the main traffic sources. We have a surprisingly large amount of traffic that comes from what you'd consider English speaking or Western countries as well. The United States, many European countries. And then there's also a pretty significant pull from Australia and New Zealand as well, because you know Thailand is a fairly frequent, not only tourist destination, but a business destination as well. We are lucky in that moving from geographic to sort of, you know, where do the clicks come from? We have a this just super deep blog that, you know, the original owners and now we have continued to create for going on eight years now. So that provides us with an incredible amount of organic traffic. We drive a considerable amount of traffic through our social feed, our you know Facebook posts and boosted posts and just sort of maintaining that relationship with the community. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Vinny, but Facebook, Thailand has the deepest saturation of any other country in the world. Everybody's on Facebook. That's what they use. Mm. And so it's a no-brainer to continue to grow that particular outlet. And then we run campaigns for our clients as well. So these are direct email campaigns or Facebook lives or, you know, social media campaigns. And that, you know, would be direct traffic that we bring back to the site. Makes sense. So in terms of the maintenance for marketing, like what do you do for marketing on the business right now? Yeah, so we have a regular posting schedule. We also, you know, have been focusing a lot on looking at what posts are have the most activity, have the most engagement, and we're both broadening and deepening those posts so that they continue to not only rank well in Google, but also then, you know, capture our readers' attention and then move them on to other parts of the site. You know, that is a part of what the team does on a daily basis, right? So we basically break the responsibilities to have it into direct outreach and sales and, you know, building these content pieces that are both interesting to our audience as well as interesting to our clients. Yeah, definitely makes sense. I want to touch now on a point that you made earlier, that the fact that you've obviously, because of your situation, you've basically accelerated the process of basically working yourself out of a job. Can you tell me a bit about the day-to-day maintenance for you personally for the site? For me personally, I don't have any day-to-day you know, management responsibilities in the business at all. We have an assistant director. We have a community manager. We have someone who is sort of overseeing bookkeeping and you know contributes as well to some of the events that we put on our site and whatnot. And then we have an intern that we keep on a regular basis. So that's the team and that's they run the day-to-day business. I'm responsible for sort of a weekly team meeting. We have a standing meeting that where we check in, we check in about not only our marketing calendar and sort of what's going on in the business, but you know, we use those for strategy sessions and those kinds of things. I'm also responsible just for you know, approving any purchases that we have to make or anything like that. I, you know, I push send on the bank transactions that those happen, but you know, there are very few of those. And then 
anything that sort of technically that happens with the site right now, I'm the go-to person. That's my background. That's what I love to do or was a passion of mine for a while. So I do not make changes to the website on a regular basis. You know, we don't have to fix things on a regular basis, but that is just, if we were going to put that in somebody's wheelhouse, that would fall on me. Yeah, makes sense. So you're basically a bit of a director role, basically overseeing everything. And you're like, in a sense, a bit of a gatekeeper signing off on any you know major decisions, stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would even say I'm not even signing off on many decisions. I really trust the team on the ground because they are the ones who are speaking with our clients on a daily basis. They're the ones who are, you know, implementing the ideas that we have and they know what's going on. Right. And so I'm more of a backstop than anything else. Yeah, it sounds like you've basically managed to compile you know, quite a talented team under your belt with the business, basically managing all the different operations in terms of content production, social media posting and all that good jazz, right? It's true. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Makes sense. And just to clarify, is this team willing to continue working with the buyer after the sale? The short answer is yes. Any buyer would need to speak with them specifically and obviously paint their vision for how they would like to move things going, you know, how they'd like to move things forward in the future. But I have no reason to believe why they wouldn't. Yeah, sure. It's always good to prepare as much as possible, though. For someone who is interested in the business, but isn't familiar with these niches, as well as this business model, what would you say are some of the skills or requirements they should learn or brush up on before committing to this? I think that somebody who has, you know, has been in a leadership position like this before, either leading a small team or is interested in, you know, small to medium sized business like this, this is a fantastic opportunity. And so what skills would I suggest that they have? You need to be able to work on an outcome basis. So this is one of the things that I would coach, you know, anybody on who's taking over the business is let the team do what they do. They're really good at it right? For someone who wanted to come in and have a more hands-on role, let's just say they're either based in Thailand or Southeast Asia. That's great. I think it would be great because, you know, another pair of hands on deck to come in, you know, maybe work on a new advertising line or a new revenue line. That would be fantastic. But really at the end of the day, this is a business that's looking for somebody to either take it in a new direction with a new vision or take the vision that is currently in place and supercharge the team, support what they need, infuse your vision as a new owner into what is possible. Bring your experiences from whatever either industry or business or background that you have and infuse it into what we're already doing. Like I said, I think that the beauty of this particular purchase is that somebody could come in and literally sort of just sort of take over and the machinery is running, right? I think that that happens, you know, people talk about that a lot when they're trying to sell a business. I'm lucky enough to have sold a couple, so I've read so many prospectuses. But in this particular case, I can truly say, like, we could hand the keys over tomorrow to a new owner and the business would function without missing a beat. But the real excitement is, where does your passion lie and where do you think that you could take it? Obviously, I don't want to minimize the potential buyer pool here, but if you are a parent or an expecting parent, especially if you're an expecting parent or, you know, have, you know, have young children, whew, this is a massively cool opportunity, not only because you get to talk with and communicate with that community in general, but you can bring your experience to it and, you know, it becomes an extremely personal and interesting opportunity in that way. If you have, you know, if you're later in life, like I said, I don't want to make myself into this old dude, but, you know, you have maybe kids that are in, you know, primary school, secondary school, again, still a fantastic opportunity because this is where family activities really come into play, right? And so, you know, again, a very long-winded answer to say, you can make this what you want. I would bring the skill sets that you have. I would bring your ideas that you have and make it your own. For sure. I mean, I guess even what I'm hearing that is, it's basically quite a well old machine that's self-sustaining at the moment in time. So in terms of keeping it going, the team that you've assembled basically keep that ticking along nicely. And it was basically a good opportunity for someone with maybe a different mindset or with new ideas to try and grow the business in different ways, basically. 100%. Like I said, if I were still sitting in Thailand, this wouldn't be on the market. The only reason I am is because I'm on the other side of the plan now. Mm -hmm. If somebody wanted to come in and have cut their teeth or if this is somebody who's really their first entrepreneurial opportunity, cut their teeth with a business that is truly running and they can come in and kind of learn the pieces and learn how it goes. And then after a time, start to kind of move it in a direction. That's a great opportunity. But then that third tier of person where maybe you see the growth opportunities, you see where this could be taken in terms of different revenue channels, different market segments, you know, expanding the network out in other countries, you know, other similar sites, those kinds of things. I mean, 
for someone like that, who really has that energy and that fire, you know, super opportunity. Gotcha. Okay. Lots of potential there. I want to explore more about the potential, actually. You kind of left breadcrumbs throughout the interview so far about the, you know, the opportunity for the business. If you did stay with the business, how would you try to grow it? I mean, I think if, if I could just interject as well and just say, you mentioned about, you know, there was a commercial perspective there. And it's also maybe a really good fit for someone who's about to be a parent or someone who's got maybe slightly older kids and has a good understanding of that development process and can tap into that experience as well. Can you share a bit more about the growth opportunities? Absolutely. Let's just start with what we do right now. If you just think of advertising opportunities, right? If you were to just only stay in that particular portion, how can you slice, dice, package, curate information in a way that is not only digestible, but, you know, easily usable and very actionable to the community that you're speaking to. And that's, again, you know, that's the parenting community in Thailand, right? Those opportunities themselves, for instance, you know, we have several guides, we have several, what we call not only guides to things to do and guides to, you know, the school system and those kinds of things, but we also have seasonal guides for camps and, you know, what to do when schools on those kinds of things. There's still, you know, a laundry list of those types of informational products that you could put together and move forward. Okay, take the traditional business that you have right now and move it forward. Now, if you really wanted to be serious, again, if I were still sitting in Thailand, what do you do next in order to evolve this business into something greater? Connecting the business with events. So as an event planner, as an event manager, you can just think of any one of the large, you know, family friendly activities or event, you know, kid centers in there. Can you put together events with them where you're actually doing ticket sales and you're essentially affiliate marketing through ticket sales or through event planning with them? There's a huge opportunity. We have an attempt. The e-commerce opportunity for the parenting and child sector, anybody who's in an e-commerce knows it's absolutely ginormous, not only because parents like to buy things for their kids, but parents like to buy things for themselves as well. And it's evergreen because there's always going to be kids around. And so right now we don't really have an e-commerce outlet. So could you take a marketplace or build out a marketplace where, again, you are either putting a new unique product on the table or, you know, white labeling a product and putting it on the table or essentially just doing marketing for other e-commerce outlets and taking a slice of those pies. There's another huge opportunity in terms of revenue generation and growth for the business. And then, you know, outside of just those kind of standard plays, you know, what other kinds of authority topics, you know, authority pieces could you put in? Think for a second about, you know, having an authority voice in the health sector. You know, as you and I are recording this, we're in the time of COVID, everybody's on lockdown, but that's going to be passing over the next six to 12 months, let's say, hopefully, at least into a new normal, right? Mm -hmm. But just the conversation around child health and family health, diving deeper, developing, you know, that authority voice, and then moving into, hey, let's connect with dentists and with doctors, orthodontists and pediatricians, you know, and then suddenly you are not only a channel through which those people get appointments, but maybe then you've become an authority site into who does it best in this particular part of the world. Let me stop there. But I hope that I've made it clear that right now what we have is a fairly powerful platform that is being built every day and this established trusted brand. And so now where do you want to take that brand is the question that you'd want to ask as a new owner. For sure. That definitely sounds like there's lots of different avenues to go down and try and explore. The way I've interpreted this is is basically expanding the reach of the business by connecting with, as you said, different professionals in related communities, like healthcare communities especially. And also there's opportunities to diversify the revenue streams with the e-commerce aspect as well, if someone had that type of experience. That all makes sense, Stephen. But obviously, you know, as a serial entrepreneur at this point, you're aware that all businesses have inherent risks with them. What would you say are some of the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? You know, the biggest risk is that you're not providing value to your clients, right? So at the end of the day, as we mentioned at the very beginning of this conversation, as being advertising driven, those advertisers want to make sure that they're investing those dollars wisely and they want to see that there's a return on that investment. So making sure that you're always providing that value back 
What other risks are out there? That's a tough one, Vinny, because I don't see a whole lot of risks in terms of, is this market going to disappear? No. You know, there's going to be parents, there's going to be children forever. That's always going to be a thing. Is the Southeast Asian market going to shrink? No. You know, that's going to be there. Is the tourism market going to get smaller? No. So that's always going to be there. So really it's, you know, the downsides or the risks that are involved may be related to barriers of entry, you know. But again, for someone to come in and replicate eight years of organic history, which is what we have right now, that's just, you know, it's super, super hard. So rather than looking at what are the risks, I would say, you know, what are the opportunities for partnering? What are the opportunities for combining and growing? And for someone who really maybe has a larger pocketbook to look at this, could you accelerate growth and evolution through you know a larger investment, right? So take a risk and maybe push into, like I said, that e-commerce play or, you know, by combining maybe similar sites around the region into, you know, a conglomerate that that's a real opportunity right there. Makes sense. So it sounds like the risks relatively minimal outside of the usual shebang, right? Yeah. I mean, there's got usual business risks. I mean, like you don't show up, you don't do the work, you don't deliver value, you know, your advertisers are going to walk away. Mm -hmm. But in terms of you know, this isn't a product line. This isn't a trend. This isn't a fashion. This is parenting and friendly activities. This will never go away. Makes sense. Just going to wrap up the interview here with just final few questions for you. How much support are you offering buyers? You know, on the listing right now, I'm quite honestly, I'm a generous seller. I'm happy to provide as much support as necessary over, you know, a reasonable time frame. Let's talk about that and negotiate that with the deal. On the site right now, it says, you know, 90 days of support over Zoom or Skype or Slack or chat or whatever you want. But again, let's make that part of the deal. I have no interest at all in seeing this business go sideways or pear-shaped or, you know, be you know, have a bad transition with the team that's in place. I love these people. And so I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that not only happens smoothly, but to make sure that the business is going to thrive when I leave. Okay. That's great to hear. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah, absolutely. There's no reason why I'd need to uh, start a new business in this market. Again, you know, it was very sort of personally, my, you know, my life experience specific was the reason why I got into it in the first place. And I would still run it if I were there, you know, in Southeast Asia. So yeah, no problem with that. Gotcha. And are you open to seller financing, like negotiating something like an earn out? Yeah, for sure. I would take any offer on its merits and really sort of, you know, as anybody who knows who has been in these sort of buy sell transactions before, you know, there's a chemistry that needs to happen in order for a deal to really happen and really happen successfully. And so I'd love to speak with anybody who's interested in purchasing the business to talk about, hey, you know, how can we make a deal that makes sense and make sure that the business stays successful going forward? Great to hear. Final question for you, really. If you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer and you're looking from the other side of the looking glass, why would you say that this display advertising business is worth buying? Honestly, if you're interested in Southeast Asia, if you're passionate about that part of the world, if you are passionate about this niche of parenting and family friendly activities, there is just, you know, you're walking in this established brand, this established business that's been around for, again, since 2013. And you've got a great team in place. And so you have all of the right pieces in place for someone who wants to either continue doing what we're doing or really roll up their sleeves either, you know, through their own hard work or through additional investment dollars to grow and evolve this into something that's bigger and brighter. The sector that we're in, again, I've said it, I think 20 times on this call, but it's an evergreen sector. You know, there will always be parents. There will always be children. Those children need education. They need things to do. They need, you know, activities. And, you know, if you look outside just sort of the expatriate sort of I'm living here community. The tourism community is just an, a completely untapped sector for this particular business. You know, the sky really is the limit in that regard as well. That's really good to hear. Is there anything that you think I might have missed that you'd like to share? I think we've covered it quite well, to be honest with you. You know, even it's just so fun to even talk about the business right now, just because I feel myself get excited about it. I feel <laughs> myself, you know, sort of saying, God, this is what I would do. And this is what I do. And, this mm-hmm. way. and you know, like I said, it's a bittersweet conversation simply because the only reason I'm having it is because I'm on the other side of the planet now. And the team that we have in place, I, as we talk about them, I'm thinking about them and, you know, they're just fantastic to work with. And so, you know, this is a great opportunity and I'm really looking forward to speaking with prospective buyers. For sure. I mean, you've definitely shared a lot of information about the business's makeup, its DNA, and its opportunities moving forward. We hope that you find the right buyer so that you can support them in in continuing growing the business in the future. Me too. Looking forward to hearing from whomever would like to talk. Thanks.
Fantastic. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, you can head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 50496. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked the listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.